In the first lesson of this animation, we will create our dot which is flying around and fading off on the screen. Welcome in the first lesson of this animation, where we will prepare our first steps. Let's go and create a new composition. I will hit Composition, New Composition. My first composition will be HD size, it will have a frame rate of 30 frames and a duration of 5 seconds. The entire animation may be a bit shorter, but 5 seconds is ok to work with. Let's create it and we can start to work. I'll also delete the old composition so it doesn't get in the way and let's start. Please go to the Tools panel, click on the Rectangle tool and select the Ellipse tool. I'll have the Ellipse tool selected. I will create the first shape in the middle of the screen. Please make a shape of an size, for example, like this. Then press Y on your keyboard to select the Pen Behind tool and by clicking on this shape layer, try to place this little point, this is called an anchor point, somewhere in the middle. It looks ok, this is middle enough as I can say and we are prepared. Then I hit Align and I align this circle perfectly in the middle. Click this button and click this button from the Align panel. If you don't see it, you can go to Window and open up Align. Now I need another shape layer, I'll deselect this one. I click once again on my ellipse tool and I make a very little shape here on the left side. If it turns out too big, that's no problem because we can click on this layer, we can press S on our keyboard and we can work with the scale. Now as you can see, it makes it smaller towards the middle. Why is that? Again because of the anchor point. Click on the shape layer, once again to the pen behind tool and take this little fella here in the middle, to the middle of this little object. It doesn't have to be perfectly precise, but you need to try your best. Ok, now if I make it smaller, it will go towards its middle. I think this size is ok. Now we will work on our very first animation. Let me maybe select the move tool, I make it a bit closer here. So the animation isn't so intensive, ok, right here. Please select this second shape layer, take this little parent snail and tell it, hey dude, shape layer number one, this big one, is your parent. I can even rename it parent ro rotator. Ok, that's the parent rotator. What parenting means is wherever this one goes, the second goes as well. Ctrl Z, let me make the first animation. I press R to open up the rotation property on this parent rotator. I click a keyframe here, then I go 2 seconds forward on my timeline, I see 2 seconds are here, I can also confirm it in this area, and I make the rotation as big, so it will be here in the middle. I want to be precise, so I will hit 135 degrees, negative 135, you can do this as well. And this will be our very first animation. It's a bit slow, it's a bit boring, but that doesn't matter right now. Now I don't need this anymore, so I deselect it. But the animation still stays because this shape has its properties here with keyframes. Now I select this shape and to make the animation a bit, a tiny bit more interesting, I want to work with the scale. At first, the scale will be like... 10%, so it's really really small as you can see. A few frames forward, the scale will be back to maybe 70%, just so it's a small dot, but it still should be visible. Now it goes forward, and as the animation ends, somewhere around here, I want another keyframe. So I click here to make another keyframe, and at about 2 seconds it should disappear, so I select 0. Now this is the animation we have until now, boom, it grows and it shrinks, ok? If we want to make sure that it's invisible in the beginning, I can press T to open up opacity, I hit on 0% and somewhere around here it slowly fades in, so I make the opacity 100%. You see it's invisible, but here it starts slowly to be visible, boom and ok. 
The very last touch we want to make is press Ctrl A to select everything, press U on your keyboard to reveal all keyframes and I will select all keyframes, I right click, keyframe assistant and I select easy ease. This way the animation will look a bit better because it will flow in better instead of being a linear animation. You see it goes a bit faster, it slows and then it goes again a bit faster. This really looks better. If you are advanced in After Effects, you can also select keyframes and press on the graph editor. The graph editor allows you to manually adjust the speed of any keyframe. But that's for advanced users, I don't want to go into the graph editor now, but if you want to explore it, you can for example select two keyframes, press on the graph editor, pull those handles left or right and see what result will you achieve. Now the end animation would be a bit different, it would be quicker at the beginning and it would slow down. And this is it for our first composition, for our first animation we wanted to have prepared for this animation.